Okay, you're going to love today's lesson because it is a quick review of what you've already studied in previous years. We're going to be discussing circles and circumference. So these are our content standards and the mathematical practices we'll be using on our assignment today. Previously you have identified and used parts of parallelograms. Now you're going to identify and use parts of a circle and you're going to solve problems involving the circumference of a circle. We've got uh, quite a bit of new vocabulary, which may not be so new to you. Circle, center, radius, chord, diameter, concentric circles, circumference, pi, inscribed, and circumscribed. So you may not be really familiar with inscribed and circumscribed, or perhaps concentric. So we'll add that to what we already know about circles today. A circle is the locus or a set of all points in a plane equidistant from a given point called the center of the circle. And so here's key concept about special segments in a circle. We have the radius, the plural is radii, so that's half the distance from um, the center, is from the center of the circle to a point on the circle. There is a chord, AB represents a chord, it uh, touches two parts of the circle, but it doesn't go through the center. And then there's the diameter. It's got two endpoints on the circle like a chord does. However, it goes through the center. It's made up of two collinear radii. So let's practice identifying segments in a circle. So we need to know about name in the circle and identifying its radius. Well, the center of the circle is E, so we're going to name it circle E, or we can use the symbol for circle. And there's two radii, EB and ED. Now let's identify a chord and a diameter of this circle, Q. Well, there are three chords. We have X, Z, W, Y, and W, Z. Now notice that WY and XZ go through the center, so they are diameters. Time for you to check your progress. So pause the video, read the problem, and then come back and check to see that you've got the correct answer. Well, it's pretty easy to name this circle F since F is the center, so we can rule out D, and then it wants to identify the radius. Well, the radius starts at from a center to an end point, or to a point on the circle. So Fn is its radius. Okay, which segment is not a chord? So pause the video, make your selection, and come back and check your answer. You're right. Segment Fn is not a chord. Do you remember what we call that? It is a radius. Very good. By definition, the distance from the center of a circle to any point on the circle is always the same. Therefore, all radii, or R, of a circle are congruent. And since a diameter, D, is composed of two radii, all diameters of a circle are also congruent. So let's find the radius and the diameter. If RT is 21 centimeters, what is the length of QV? Now we know that all the diameters and all the radii have the same measure, and RT is a diameter and QV is a radius, so we know the diameter is two times that radius, so we'll substitute in. Since RT is a radius, we know that uh, the radius is two times, or the diameter is two times the radius. Now we divide both sides by two to solve for R. So the measurement of this radius, QV, is 10.5 centimeters. Okay, time for you to check your progress. If QS is 26 centimeters, what is the length of segment RV? Pause the video for a moment, then come back and check your answer. So since QS is a diameter, we know 26 is equal to 2RV. Divide both sides by 2, and we've got 13 centimeters. Excellent. As with other figures, pairs of circles can be congruent, similar, or share other special relationships. 
So two circles are congruent if and only if they have congruent radii. They could be, they are similar and they could be concentric. That means they're coplanar and they have the same center. So one lies within the other, sharing a center. So we have circle A with radius AB and we have circle A with radius AC and they are concentric. Now circles can intersect in different ways. They can have two points of intersection, one point of intersection, or no points of intersection. The segment connecting the centers of the two intersecting circles contains the radii of the two circles. So now let's find measures in intersecting circles. You might want to sketch this diagram so that as we're working through the problem, you have it to go back to. And also make a note of the diameter of circle X is 22 units, the diameter of circle Y is 16 units, and WZ is 5 units. We are asked to find XY. So we're given the measurement of the diameter and what WY is and the diameter of circle X. And so we know that XZ is equal to 11. WZ is part of radius XZ and part of radius WY. So first of all, we need to find ZY. Well, we know that WZ plus ZY is equal to WY, and we know that WZ is 5 and WY is 8, so ZY must be 3. Next, we're going to find XY. Because XZ plus ZY is equal to XY, 11 plus 3, that means that XY is equal to 14. Okay, time for you to check your progress. So pause the video for a moment and then come back and check your answer. Did you get 7 inches? Well, we know that AD is 9 units and BA is 4.5 units and CD is two units because we're given the diameter. So we also know that taking all of AD, which we've already said is nine units, and we subtract CD from it, AD minus CD is gonna give us AC. So nine minus two is seven. The circumference of a circle is the distance around the circle. By definition, the ratio, the circumference divided by diameter, is an irrational number called pi. Two formulas for circumference can be derived by using this definition. So we can either say that the circumference is equal to pi times diameter, or the circumference is equal to 2 pi r. So let's work problems using that information. We've got some crop circles here. And the largest of the three circles had a radius of 30 feet. We're to find its circumference. Okay. So we know the circumference is equal to pi times the diameter. We know what the radius is, so we can also 2 pi r, right? 60 times pi. And we're going to use a calculator. Use your pi button is what we're using on the, proper, on the problems today. So if you're not, if you're using 3.14, you might get different answers than we're getting uh, when we're using our pi button. So approximately 188 and a half feet. Okay, time for you to check your progress. So pause the video for a moment and work the problem, then come back and check your answer. So pi times 100, or 120 is 377 feet. Excellent. Now these circumference formulas can also be used to determine the diameter and radius of a circle when their circumference is given. Okay, so we're given the circumference is 65 and 4 tenths feet. So we divide both sides by pi. So the diameter is approximately 20 and 82 hundredths feet. Radius is equal to half of the diameter. So when we divide that by 2, it's 10 and 41 hundredths 
using a calculator. Okay, time for you to check your progress. Let's pause the video for a moment, work the problem, then come back and check your answer. Okay, we're given that the circumference is 16 and 8 tenths. That's equal to 2 pi r. We divide both sides by 2, then divide both sides by pi. So the radius is 2 and 67 hundredths meters. Again, use the pi button on your calculator. A polygon is inscribed in a circle if all of its vertices lie on the circle. A circle is circumscribed about a polygon if it contains all the vertices of the polygon. So let's look and find the circumference of a circumscribed. So it contains all the vertices of the polygon. It's circumscribed. It Notice the end of the circle does not touch this end of the, of the triangle. So it's not inscribed. We, we, the circle is circumscribed about the polygon. Okay, you might sketch this very quickly so that we have it at, to refer to, but uh, notice we've got a right triangle, so we're going to be looking at Pythagorean theorem. So the radius of the circle is the same length as either leg. Notice, we remember we said that the radius is the same in the entire circle. So we're going to call the length x. Both legs are the same, and we're given that the hypotenuse was 3 times the square root of 2. Well, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and we simply solve for x. So the radius of the circle is 3. Now to find the circumference, we're going to put 3 in for the radius, so 6 pi units. Notice that we're leaving our circumference in terms of pi, or that means we have a pi in our answer. We're not multiplying it all the way out. Okay, time for you to check your progress. So pause the video for a moment and work this problem out, then come back and check your answer. 10 times the square root of 2 pi. So we have x squared plus x squared is equal to 10 squared. Very good. We end up with x squared is equal to 50. Just simplify 50. 50 is the square root of 25 times 2. So we'll pull the 25 out from another radical. So x is equal to 5 square root of 2. So the cir circumference is equal to 2 times pi times 5 square root of 2. Well, 2 times 5 is 10 square root of 2 pi. We left it in terms of pi. Very good. You are ready to begin your assignment.